everyone. Um, thanks so much for joining me today for this presentation. Um, today I'll be talking about a brief overview on selected grain handling safety hazards. Um, this will be a mixture of a literature review and also the initial part of an existing project here regarding uh, grain elevators in uh, in the state of Illinois. Uh, my name is Jamie Tieson. I'm currently a Sequoia Fellow and Surge Fellow here in the ADE Department at Illinois. So I will go ahead and get started. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, the, the objectives of our study, also the rest, the rationale and methodology behind the study, um, as well as some selective selected hazards regarding grain handling and, and grain handling facilities here in the state of Illinois, as well as some recommendations, um, and then um, some, some references as well. So this boils down to having three primary objectives. First, we need to identify the current hazards associated with grain bins. Um, and the primary source we want to look into for this would be looking at a literature review. Um, the next step would be to assess current safety practices. And then the next step, um, the next objective here is to provide specific recommendations for improvements in said safety practices. So um, one of the reasons why you know, we, we look into this is because uh, right now agriculture, um, which is generally where, uh, where, where grain handling, um, the grain handling profession falls under is uh, one of the most dangerous professions in, 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 in the country right now. Um, depending on how you categorize transportation, um, agriculture would be the standalone most most dangerous profession in the country. Um, Graymans also are a unique environment because they present numerous hazards. Um, there's also been a, a lot of a lot of injuries and unfortunately fatalities associated with working with with grain grain bins and grain handling facilities. Um, so. Some of the, I think some of the some some of the major hazards and some are obviously more more uh, more severe than others. Um, ergonomics is one that's that's not really talked about a whole lot, um, but because you have a lot more um, people sitting down in, in office settings with all of the all of the automated a lot of automation, a lot of computer work, um, you know, and just kind of general secretary type duties. Um, this, this I think becomes even even more important than it was, you know, 30, 40 years ago. I'm making sure, you know, that that those folks have, you know, um, uh, the the proper uh, the proper ergonomically designed furniture, uh, particularly chairs. You know, if they're um, if, if if they're you know sitting sitting at, at a desk, that that you know that the desk proper properly you know accommodates them. Um, also, in, in in the grain handling facilities themselves, you also have. Um, Conditions where there's a lot of dust and, and debris buildup. Um, you can also have there's also an obvious danger from fire because you have a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of electrical systems there. Plus, you know conditions that exist for potential explosions on both primary and secondary. Um, also, as you might imagine, with any agricultural buildings, um, these uh, they are prone to to infestations um, if, if the area is not maintained. Um, there's also serious issues with uh, electrical equipment um, if it's not properly maintained. Um, but I think the two big ones that safety and health folks talk about a lot is, is engulfment and entrapment in grain. Um, and then something that, that I that I like to talk about is is the external spatial management of the facilities. Um, I'm just going to kind of um, go through here some some examples um, to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. Um, so on on the picture here that's on our left, um, this isn't something that you would want to have people sitting on. Um, in fact, what a lot of uh, what I would advise safety managers to do in this particular case with something on the left is uh, you, you would want to discard that particular piece of furniture completely. Uh, you know, I mean, take the chainsaw to it, cut it in half, and then just you know take it and haul it off to the salvage yard. Um, because if you take, the problem is if you take stuff like that and you get stored away in the corner. What tends to happen is is that if somebody needs to you know uh, you know use like a stepping stool or or even you know use it as a ladder to get to um, a shelf that's somewhere in the office or they need to see something in the grain bin that they can't see you know just by standing on the ground um, you know if they use a defective piece of equipment like that you know obviously you know it's it's not you know you know safe to use um, you know I think I think the best course of action is just to get rid, rid of that completely um, a better example of of what I'm talking about with ergonomics is, is on the right here. 
um, you know, you, you want a chair that, that's comfortable, that has, you know, kind of that, um, that, that, that back support. Um, th this chair is, I think, maybe now um, in, in, in uh, you know, 2020, you can probably find um, better examples of, of chairs, particularly with, with better neck support for tall people. But um, that's kind of, you know, generally what, what we would be looking for. Um, dust and debris. So this, this, is, this is a problem with, with grain mix. And this is what, you know, can, under the right conditions, can lead to, to explosions um, at grain handling facilities. Um, but the other issue, too, is you can kind of see here, they, uh, they have uh, a lot of these little pieces of pieces of corn just kind of laying around there and um, those kind of things will attract will attract you know your, your small vermin like rats and, and, and other smaller mammals um you know uh, rats mice um, the, those, those types of animals that, that you don't want uh, meandering around your, your grain handling facilities um because they, they do carry they do carry diseases with them and it is you know um, it, an illness hazard that exists um also uh the best way to just, you know, um, combat this particular hazard is to make sure that you have adequate housekeeping and maintenance. Um, I will say that that this is, you know, often an issue, and I think there's a there's a, the main reason for that is because, um, you know, folks have have they have a, uh, there's a lot of things to do at a great handling facility, um, you know, sweeping the floors and you know picking up little pieces of corn. Um, it isn't really, you know, high on everybody's list to do, but it's something that you know, needs to be done on a regular basis um, in order to prevent to prevent these hazards. Um, in some scenarios, we've seen you know, where people are not are not keeping good record records. In some cases, they're backdating records, which uh, you know can can lead to problems if there if there's an incident on the site, and um, you know you have you have um, you know law enforcement officials get involved, or if uh, if, if OSHA gets involved. Um, you know that that can I, that can really really complicate things um, for your for for management and for and for your company um, if if you know you you get caught doing that. Um, so good record keeping is 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 something that's that's really important. Um, electrical hazards. Um, I think one of the things about about electrical systems, and I've, I've highlighted in blue down here because this this particular area at this handling facility, whenever they get um, a, a fairly moderate thunderstorm here. This this trench area tends to fill up with water, and you have you know um, a cord hanging down from here. Uh, you know, obviously when that you know when you have electrical equipment that potentially could come into contact with water, and that's that's a problem. Um, the other issue though too is is that um, some of the electrical boxes, if they're not maintained, you'll have um, animals like rats, mice, or birds that will nest in them, and they'll you know. Uh, with with the nest, you know, you have a lot of flammable material in there, and so that's one thing that can really create a, a fire hazard um, with within within the facility itself. Um, so when we talk about engulfment and, and, and entrapment, um, engulfment is where a person's head is completely submerged beneath the grain. Um, entrapment is is, is where um, one or more of their of their body parts get get stuck in the grain. Um, and, it's, and it's actually it's actually fairly easy to get to get stuck in in grain. It's and it's just a matter of, of physics, the physical composition of, of the grain and the forces acting on it. Um, if if you're you know um, really deep in 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 the grain, um, you're probably not getting out of it with with help. And you, you cannot um, just pull somebody pull somebody out. It, it it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't work like that. Um, you, you know you have you have uh, uh, a lot of different um, you know, uh, forces acting, act, acting, acting on, you know, whatever part of your body happens to be trapped. And the rescue operation for this is, uh, it's, 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 it's very involved. Um, you know, you really have to know what, what the situation is. Um, and you really have to, you really have to be trained to rescue someone from, uh, from a grain engulfment or, or a grain entrapment. Um, there have been cases where, uh, rescue attempts have actually made the situation even worse. Um, because you know folks weren't weren't properly trained. Um, over here in the corner uh, illustrates one of the one of the issues uh, that 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 leads to engulfment and entrapment. Um, obviously, that this hazard is is uh, completely preventable if you don't go into the grain bin itself and start walking around on, on the grain. But what happens is that because of changes with uh, with, with moisture content, um, that you can get this crusted grain surface, and you can have somebody who will walk on it. 
but you have these voids that are, you know, that, that can't be detected um, because this is obviously an, an opaque surface. So you can have a person walking and then, you know, they come into contact with, with one of these voids. There's not enough um, upward force to hold, hold up the body weight of the person. So they, they fall through and then they get, and they get entrapped or, or engulfed. Um, by the way, I, I would like to point out too, it is possible this person, this particular person here is submerged, but it is possible for this person to survive. Um, there have been cases where people have been submerged and, you know, they have, they, they'll be wearing a hat and the bill of a hat will, you know, create like a pocket of air and, you know, so those are breathable air. And, you know, there actually is, strictly speaking, air, and, you know, this, this is, you know, a more, a more uh, porous environment, um, especially, you know, if your head's caught in one of these other voids. Um, so, I mean, the person can still, you know, survive, survive this and death certainly is not, not immediate. Um, one of the things that, um, we can, you can do to prevent engulfing and tram is that if you have to enter a drain bin, you can use this this lanyard um, support system that, that that's been developed. Um, in order for this to work, though, it's it's really it's really at least a two man system where um, you have someone who's who's hooked up uh, to to the lanyard um, with 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 your shock absorber, obviously there, um, and the person can can be lowered into the drain bin. Um, and, you know, you're kind of using, using this technology in the body system to make sure that, you know, you're, you're not, you're not, you don't have an, an entrapment or an engulfment. Um, the final thing I want to talk about is transportation management. And really what I'm talking about here is that a lot of these um, facilities exist in areas where, you know, there's not a lot of, a lot of what we call soft attractants, um, where you have a lot of, a lot of traffic lights, a lot of signs, um, posted uh people are just kind of you know um more or less uh if you're driving down the road you know you can kind of meander um and that's that's a problem particularly at harvest season because um at harvest season this area here you would have trucks lining up um excuse me to get into the to the grain handling facility and you know the area is not not terribly well marked i mean you have you have um you know, an area here that's kind of marked off. Um, you have you have a parking lot here. If you can see these uh, th these yellow bar structures here, that you know parking spaces. Then you have a road cone here, which doesn't really you know say a whole lot. Um, and one of the bigger issues too, in some of these smaller rural areas too, is during the summer, which you know coincides with with harvest. Um, in, in most places in North America, um, at least one harvest anyway, is is you will have you know. Um, Kids on their rollerblades or bikes or skateboards, they love to come up on onto this onto this tar parking lot and, uh, and you know and, and play around. That's a problem if you have a bunch of a bunch of uh, you know semi semi trucks and trailers coming in and going going to and fro. Um, but you know it's 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 a very unusual event um, in, in the sense that it, it only it only you know harvest only happens you know you know once a year. In some places, maybe maybe twice a year in, in North America, um, so it's it's not something that's really um, even though people you know who live in a small town or on a farm grow up with, with the environment so to speak, um, it, it's not something that's really routine like like routine traffic in, in a urban or suburban area you know where you have heavy traffic in the morning and in the afternoon. It's it's not it's not quite as repetitive, and so it's it's easy to you know kind of. Um, forget that that's, you know, a hazard in the community. So um, some overall recommendations here. Um, I, I, I think that, you know, the facilities, they really themselves need to take, need to take the, the initiative um, to prevent, to prevent injuries, because this really doesn't work if, if, you know, if, if ownership, upper management and supervisors and, you know, line managers are really not in, involved with the process. Um, and, you know, people you can talk to would be, or extension agents would, would be a good place to start um, because, you know, the extension area agents, certainly in, in our area here in Champaign County uh, and agriculture are familiar with, with great handling safety. Um, you also want to lose um, uh, lockout, takeout for electronic controls. That's kind of important for these kind of facilities so you don't, you don't go into a facility and then, uh, you know, have someone flip, the, flip on the machines or the augers while, you know, people are cleaning. Um, it's just, you know, an extra step to prevent, to prevent those, those incidents from happening. 
Um, you also want to have sound bin entry and exit procedures. Um, the main issue I think there is that, you know, if, if don't enter agreement unless, unless you have to. Um, and when you do make sure that you're using a lanyard or that, you know, you're using the buddy system um, for, for that. Also, um, it's important to train and educate all of your staff. So, you know, your interns, your contract workers, I mean, the migrant workers, um, even, you know, the people in the office, anyone who could potentially come in, come within, uh, uh, who would for one reason or another have to go out, go out to the train that needs, needs to be aware of, of, of these hazards, even, even if, you know, your management structure, um, or someone who's a supervisor would, would deem that as, as unnecessary. Um, also, you'll also want to monitor the grain condition in, in the bin. Um, you know, you can use a grain uh, probe or temperature cable for that. Um, and, you know, make sure you're using best practices to keep, to keep that moisture at appropriate levels. Um, these are some of, our ref some of my references. And uh, that concludes this presentation. Thank you so much.